Well, we begin uh, this session uh, with different presentation. We begin with uh, Spanish universities. What websites all tell us about the collections? With Marina Salsa Rovira, Nuria Jornet Benito, Javier Gualar Delgado uh, of University of Barcelona. Thank you. I will share my presentation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my presentation. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon and welcome. We are here to present our research about Spanish universities, what their websites tell us about the collections they house, and from a glam perspective. Well, which is the background of the research? The present research has been done as a part of a PhD that looks for documenting university heritage in a non-museum context and from a GLAM perspective. In the next slide, we are going to tell you what GLAM is, in case you don't know. Well, this research focuses on our country, Spain, because to know the state of the art is essential to create a sustainable proposal. It has a previous part where we have studied the European websites. We are, because it's the first time that uh, we are in UMAC, uh, we come from the area of history and information science, uh, library science, more specifically, and we have been teaching metadata for 25 years. And in my case, from uh, 2019, I've been collaborating as a metadata advisor with the vice chancellor for university heritage of the University of Barcelona. Well, first, let me define what it means GLAM. GLAM is an acronym for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And it designates a trend within the heritage sector that tries to overcome the differences between these memory institutions and create channels of collaboration. University are perfect examples of GLAM institutions, so they have been collecting cultural and scientific heritage for centuries. Each memory institution has done it in, in its own sphere and usually shows it separately. According to the GLAM philosophy, cultural heritage at university uh, must be shown together. Well, objectives. Uh, my, the main goal of our research is to analyze the websites of 39 Spanish university present at ARBU uh, 2000. Uh, 19 ranking to establish to what extent they are permeable to the GLAM philosophy. Research questions. One, which kind of heritage can we find according to university websites? Two, is this heritage organized in museums? Uh, museums from a legal point of view. There is not enough to be called museum, but it should be a museum with a staff, budget, opening hours, infrastructure, etc. Third, libraries and archives are fully included into the university websites. Uh, four, are the only heritage catalogs according to Glam philosophy? And five, what metadata schemas are used? Our methodology. Uh, first, we have done a content analysis of the heritage websites of 39 Spanish universities mentioned. After, we have created a database recording university collections shown in websites. After, we have compared the information offered by websites with information held in UMAC database of collections. And finally, we have passed a checklist to every, uh, every collection to discover metadata embedded and uh, library and archive roles in heritage cataloging. Well, our results. The question one was, 
which kind of heritage can we find according university websites? Well, the first problem that we encountered is that a lot of universities do not have their own heritage website. Usually the reason is that they are institutions recently created, founded or refounded after uh, 1975, which have not had time to generate heritage. Instead, some of them replace it with websites about cultural spaces or exhibition halls. More, websites show, uh, only show the more important collections of the best catalog ones. For instance, the University of Barcelona has more than 30 collections, but only seven are shown in its website by the moment. Well, but subject area, scientific collections are the most important ones. Statistics are very similar to those of the UMAC database, where 57,3% uh, of the collections rec are uh, recorded as a scientific ones. And within the scientific collections, the most important are those related to the life, health, and earth sciences, which long time ago were basic for teaching and research. Well, but these collections are rarely museums from a legal point of view. Sometimes we can visit them, but there is poor staff, poor budget, and poor infrastructures. Unfortunately, library and archive, despite its important heritage, are outside the university heritage websites. The heritage is presented usually in separate websites. So we lost a global vision of university heritage, and surely we lost their expertise in cataloging. They could help a lot those responsible for the different collections in their documentation tasks. Well, uh, we have few data to answer questions four and five. The landscape is changing. But now only 14 universities have some times of virtual museum or online catalog for all the collection. And only five of them present the different collection under a glance perspective. And we can find together and at the same level, libraries, archives, museums, and collections. Related to metadata, the more usual in ancient online catalogs is to use custom made schemas. Standards appear in the most recent online catalogs, but there is not unit, and there are few catalogs to establish a clear trend in metadata use. It is possible that in the near future, Dublin Core and Darwin Core are going to be consolidated as a metadata schemas for virtual museums because they are metadata standards used by large metadata aggregators uh, as Europeana or JBIF. Uh, conclusions, uh, Spanish uh, scientific collection are the more common ones in the websites of Spain. Second, Spanish collections are rarely organized as museums. Sometimes, but in small universities, one museum shows material of different collections. That is a good idea for small centers and is sustainable. Uh, third, Spanish libraries and archives are outside the heritage websites. Only few offer a glam vision. We think that uh, these memory institutions should be inside. Because, because a big part of the heritage, the university heritage, is in its shelves. More, a real and global vision of the university heritage should include libraries and archives. Finally, we must remember that libraries and archives can help and should help to improve the quality and shareability of metadata. It can help the, sur the survival of the collections in a connected world. 
More, if metadata are created under standards and guidelines, it can help to survive small collections when the responsible retires. Making his, uh, his replacement uh, easier. And finally, our future work uh, follow two lines. One of them is to analyze metadata used in documenting university heritage. A direct survey has started about, it, uh, about this subject. Uh, if you are responsible of a collection or similar, we invite you to answer it. I will put the URL of the forms in the chat after. And second, to create a proposal of a sustainable methodology and metadata schema for documenting university heritage in a non-museum context. Small collections, poor staff, and poor budgets. Uh, well, that's all. Thank you. And if you are, uh, you have any uh, question, I will be delighted to answer it. Of course, Marina. Thank you very much. That uh, problematic uh, about uh, this uh, university collection is a common problem. And uh, if uh, someone want to to ask something to Marina. You could open your voice. Nobody want to, to ask. It seems that no audience has a question. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> then uh, we could uh, to continue with the uh, sciences the stories, the scientific theories and stories at NSA. KU Museum of Taiwan, which I think Chen and Niku Museum Taiwan. Yes. Um, well, yes, hello, everyone. Yes, I'm here because I have my I have some technical problem with my laptop, so I will ask my colleagues to help me to share the screen of my presentation. I will speak from my side. Okay. And I will uh, just wait for her slide and I will start to talk. Okay. Then you, you couldn't you couldn't share uh, the Yeah, because um my computer has some problems, so I cannot share. So I'm using my mobile to to have speech, but I can still see. But uh, um anyway, there's some problem with my 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 voice, my sounds from my laptop, so I can only okay, hear but yes. I can Yes, Justin, I understand because I have a, a similar problem. I don't know, Frederick, if uh, you could uh, find uh, receive the presentation of Justin and uh, present it. Yes, just give me a second. Okay. Did you send us uh, your presentation? Oh, okay. Did you did you send it by uh, you know on HU box two years ago or not? Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, great. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, okay. Yeah, it's then, here. Okay, you could you could begin now. Okay, so everyone can see the slide. So I will start from my presentation. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Good. Good afternoon. Actually, here is good night. We have we now we are nine p.m. at Taiwan. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. so today I'm going to share one of my projects. Now uh, I'm just doing in our museum and uh, the title is Sand Story. Um, as a 
University Museum, currently NCKU Museum, uses its influence as the bridge for science communication between the society and university museum. Uh, in the previous years, we have do some, we have been doing some projects. Based on the result of previous projects in our museum, it shows the importance of popular scientific activities in university museum as interaction platform of science communication among cultural communication and cultural products. And these projects that I'm talking, I'm going to talk is the diverse collection in campus. Uh, please go to next slide. Um, and this aims to organize normal popular science activity, which are not only relevant to the principle of science popular, popularization or science communication, but also the concepts of humanistic significance. On the meanwhile, this project keeps promoting and exploring past memories of NCKU. With the concept of pub, public history and story, storytelling, this project presents some some science communication and practical science in different way. Practically, these projects organize various activities, including introduction of the collection of NCK and simple experiments, keynote speeches and exhibitions related to memories of collections with context of conveying science theory, science history, and also operating principles of experiments, equipment, and gallery memories of the audience. Through above activities, this proposal is also expected to provide the public with opportunities by using NCKU Museum as a medium to engage in cultural communication and improvement of their scientific literacy. And please go next slide. Uh, this is our uh, the activities photos. Uh, the, this proposal also expects not only to promote the collection, but also enhance public recognition and understanding of UNCKU Museum by encouraging and leading teachers and students from different colleagues and administrative de departments to treasure hunt active. So this proposal would strengthen people's identity towards their departments and enlighten the community to recognize and realize the importance of preservation and protection of cultural heritage. And this is the name in this slide. You can see two photos that we just do our activity in April. Um, actually from May, we have pandemic issues in Taiwan. So we change online activity. So in April, you still see that we have the physical activity. We choose important objective, objects, collections of NCKU in each month. And this is, in, this is the one of the example on April. We invite speakers to share knowledge and its histories to audience on each topic. So we have lectures and discussions and everyone's enjoying the discussion session. Please see the next slide. And in this slide, you can see that uh, we just start from the, the, we just start the activity from this April. So in April, we have the introduction of the gate of our university. We talk about the history, how it was built and the history and theoretical um, background of this, of this uh, university gate. In June, we have uh, the calligraphy of school mode. We, it was written by President Zhang. It was in 1950s, uh, it was quite uh, about 60 years ago. In July, we talk about the university NCKU bill. We talk about the scientific theory about uh, the bill and also how it was organized and how it was built by the support of the governments. Just happened in August. In August the 27th, we talk about the donation of uh, the current uniforms for appearance appointee of Wakatsuki Mitsuka 
Mitsukata. Mitsukata, uh, he was the first president of NCKU because actually this year was the 19th uh, anniversary, university anniversary. So we have a lot of different kind of activity has been happening in this year. And this serious activity also one of the important activities activities for our university. Okay, please go next slide. Uh, just I mentioned before, because the pandemic issues that we told return to all of the activity to online, but um, to our surprise, it attracts more diverse audience from different area and get more fruitful feedback, not only from the university, uh, university museum, but also some professional museum and the local public, they also kind of very interesting our activity to join online section. So it's kind of our um, uh, uh, other feedback from different kind of background and different kind of people. So it's very interesting for us to get some new ideas for, from their feedback. Uh, this is still, for, please go to the next slide because this is an ongoing project. So in the future, we are going to invite more NCKU uh, members, including students, colleagues, and also al alumni to share and nominate their favorite objects in, uh, uh, in October because our uh, university anniversary is going to happen in, in November. Um, but from this, we are going to engage more colleagues to broaden their projects and create um, more possibilities to different disciplines. Especially we want to in, invite, it, uh, for example, departments, uh, history departments or medical college for, uh, to join our projects. Finally, we make future activity always have the good balance in science humanity to show um, the science to show the university outreach, not only for the colleagues or students in our campus, but also local people uh, in, uh, nearing our campus. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question or feedbacks, I will be very happy to receive from you. Thank you very much, okay. Yasin. Yes. Uh, and if someone want to ask something to Chessin, I think. Uh... Yeah, if I may, uh, Sebastian um, from University of Strasbourg. Um, I will, uh, you say that you, you do our, your best to valorize your, uh, what you're doing with the student. And yes. um, so how many people do you succeed to reach when you're doing this uh, vote for the, for the best instrument or the... Um... Uh, you mean the activity for, uh, for the vote, for the collection? Uh, hopefully we are going to at least, you mean for, act, for each activity or for the uh, election for our um, objects for our university? Hmm? Sorry, the election. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, for election, we hope. Hopefully, we at least we will get one thousand students to vote. Yeah, because uh, recently uh, we have um, many activities happening in our university because of the university and mastery. So students kind of they are very um, like um, they are attractive from different kind of um, activity from our university in different ways. So it's kind of, uh, um, uh, so we will try to attract people and students to engage our uh, activity, yeah. Do you use social media for the vote or what tools do you use for the vote? We, we want to use the social media like uh, uh, Facebook. Actually, we have Facebook media, social media for our universe, for our museum. So we are going to use this. Once I get this activity done, I will share the information to you <laughs> if you are interested. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Yasin. Very interesting. Thank you. Project. Then uh, we continue now with how can a university museum connect scientists and artists? 
and uh, the presentation is uh, with Juan Nayun, Hanyan University Museum of Seoul, South Korea. Welcome. Okay, hello. Can you hear me clearly? <laughs> I hope. And hello, good afternoon, and actually good night. In Seoul, it's, it's <laughs> over 10, 10 30 p.m. <laughs> My name is Nayong Huang, and I'm working as a curator at Hanyang University Museum in Seoul, South Korea. And oh, it is a big honor <laughs> to participate in this UMEC University conference. And this is my second time to join the UMEC conference. Uh, in this presentation, I'd like to introduce the how scientists and artists met uh, at the our Hanyang University Museum and, they, and how they met the visitors through our project. And this project is named the uh, Cosmonaut. Uh, uh, the Cosmonaut is literally, the meaning is the Russian version of the astronaut, you know, and it means in Korea, the uh, Cosmos plus human, and we had a subtitle that with the solving its science and making with art. So this is our main two main poster images. So in this project, we want to unify the effort from a very a small particles from the CMS experiment and to the into the the origin of the universe, like the experiment the LIGO and with the scientists and artists all over the world and deliberate the ideas, the concept to the public in South Korea in our museum. And yeah, and this is our museum at the first of our the exhibition. <laughs> so this project started with the collaboration with uh, Dr. Michael Hoch and he is a scientist and also an artist. And he started, he started his art and science, art and CMS project in 2012. And he broadened his area to the, the origin project. It's a cross-disciplinary science educational and exhibitions. And today, uh, Michael joined uh, on this section. <laughs> so, uh, actually, he started his uh, project in the CERN, and I think uh, many of you know about the CERN, the uh, European Organization for Nuclear Research, and the, the one of the, the biggest experiment at CERN, the LHC, and also one of the four detectors, the CMS and ALICE. And also, he broadened the, the area to the LIGO, who studies about the gravitational wave. It's on Einstein's idea. And also some ice cube experiment who's searching for the neutrinos in Antarctica. So we come together for last one and a half, uh, half years, uh, connect the, the scientists all over the world and artists and the communicators. So yeah, so we opened the exhibition on the 20th on May this year. And this is our main plan on third floor. And this is the second floor and I'm now, I'm here. <laughs> so I want to show our, the outside building, the museum becomes a CMS. It is a, a kind of a God particle hunting machine to detect the Higgs boson to, in 2012. And this is the Michael's idea to transform our museum building into the, the life-size uh, CMS photo and with his work. So this is his plan and we made it as a fabric and cover the half of our facade into the fabric. So it is, as you know, and the left is the, his uh, plan and the right picture is the real photos of this project. And, you know, in this, in this COVID situation, people, Actually, it's difficult to come to the museum, but it gives the very vivid color uh, to our campus. And the people who usually don't have an interest in the museum, they asked about what it is and they want to wonder uh, what, it, what it is and come to the museum. 
And also I want to introduce the, one of the Korean artists, Park Jin Woo, uh, and he started his career as a calligraphy uh, in the, the East Asian tradition, but he broadened his way with the traditional material uh, with the very creative, his own way. So he made his own universe and this, this work is the, the galaxy of seeds. So he uses the ink the brush and the kind of a dif different kind of seeds like rice and walnuts and beans. So I think uh, maybe we juxtapose is the Michael's and Tino's work in the intro of our museum exhibition. So we made a multi facet uh, image room with the, their walks. So I think it is a very uh, conceptual and people can easily understand uh, what our exhibition want to deliver. Uh, like the relationship with the uh, human and universe and also the nature and science and also the technical and you know nature <laughs> and also in the east and the west so michael did the new work for our exhibition is the Icarus swing and you can see behind me <laughs> and also send us some artifacts like the Chokpo series by Barry Barish. He got the Nobel Prize because he detected the gravitational wave. So uh, for this project, he gave us a short lecture from the gravity to gravitational waves. And also we made an uh, online exhibition. So I think it is, um, uh, I, we made a website like this to deliver the contents and photos and all the videos. And also we made a space-based uh, exhibition and it is not uh, done yet, but uh, I think it is a good archive for the exhibitions. So along with this exhibition, we prepared some several events like the opening ceremonies and also at that night, we had a special museum night and it is in the uh, museum week in 2021. So we titled it the 2021 Space Odyssey Night from the Stan Kubrick's movie. So we conducted the artist talk with Michael and Zinu and we contacted the three student bands and prepared music, beer and sandwiches. Mm -hmm. and also broadcasted it and on YouTube. And, well, it was a quite a big challenge for us to conduct this kind of events. And also the next week, uh, we have a special event, it's a round table. So the old scientists, uh, four scientists and three artists uh, come together in our museum and they're talking about their ideas and they can share their concepts and the relationship <laughs> with the science and art and also the universe. And we the participate in the online and offline and over almost three hours, uh, it, they have a very fantastic night. Hmm. Yeah, this is the photo of our seminar room. And also we prepared a, a very, uh, big educational programs like this is supported by the Korean Association of Museums. So we prepared five regular lectures uh, and the university professors, they uh, give the lecture about the particle physics, cosmology and the music and movies about the cosmos. And also we collaborate with the art educational center in our university. So three different teachers, they conduct a different kind of program via Zoom, like the using the uh, marbling techniques like this and all the classes was, was in Zoom. And also we prepare some workshops, science workshops and art workshops. So the, the professor Taejong Kim, he has a cloud chamber workshops to uh, detect the cosmic ray and also some uh, calligraphy workshops like this, and also made a kind of art workshop with Song Yi Kim. And also we preparing the educational material, uh, two kinds of materials and 
uh, with Michael. And we uploaded this to the, our museum website and anybody can download it and using the online exhibition, they can, uh, they can show exhibit uh, our exhibition without coming to the, the museum. So uh, our exhibition is still have a, another two months, but uh, from the about the only from the July, the COVID situation in Korea is gone, is worse. So it is difficult to take um, any other uh, events right now. But I think uh, under this COVID situation, we have a big challenge to uh, dealing with the interdisciplinary topic and had an international collaborations. And we try to make it a hybrid exhibition using the online and physical exhibition. And also I think the utilization of media like the videos and also some kind of uh, online platforms. So I think it, it will be changed a lot. And also the museum building it widened the boundaries of the museum into the campus. And I think it's one of the very successful uh, project in our exhibition. Actually, it, the color changed like this <laughs> for three years, for three months. So uh, our director wants to put out it. So maybe next, next week <laughs> we will change it. So the, all these things, it is possible because we've got the government funding for three different pro uh, projects. But the Vision Week and the educational programs and also online exhibitions and with a lot of paperwork. So until now, we felt that it is well kind of successful, but somebody who didn't want to, who didn't interested in science, they said, oh, still science is still difficult. So I think it is a Mm, big issue because we are not the specialist to the science communicator. So it is a uh, kind of mm, difficulty to deliver the very recent delicate science ideas and findings in our museum. And also I think we have to help them balance in online and offline exhibition and education. And also the safety under the COVID-19 is also a big issue. So uh, this is our the YouTube channel with uh, a lot of interviews and the events. Also, this is our <laughs> QRs, a lot of QRs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is, this is it. And I hope we have another two months so maybe the Michael can come to our museum at the end of the exhibition. So maybe we have uh, some fantastic closing party with him. So thank you so much. And if you oh, have any thank questions. you very much. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you for hearing. Yeah. Thank you, Nayun. Thank you, Michael. That is something really wonderful, impressive. Yeah. Uh, At the chat, you could see. Uh, oh, everybody are saying wonderful, really <laughs> impressive. I don't know if one, uh, someone wants to, to ask something. Amazing work, indeed wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. very interesting, of course. And very contemporary uh, subject, of course. Yeah. Wonderful. So yeah, I read. Well, that. someone want to, to ask something to Nayun? Mm -hmm. So the Marta asked about the building going to stay like that of the yes. exhibition. Uh -huh. so I I mentioned it in the end of my presentation that it uh, it is a fabric, so it changed quite a lot under the summer uh, light, sunlight. So uh, and we have another program to kind of uh, the, so I, maybe next week we will change it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is, I, I think the changing is the, the, the changing process is also very uh, interesting, but somebody thought <laughs> it is not that looking good. Can I ask something, Margarita? Yes, of course, Marta. First of all, I love the, <clears throat> the project. I found it very original. 
the image is spectacular. It's very well done in terms of museography and scenography and so on. I wanted to ask two things. First is uh, this relationship with uh, the support that you mentioned of the Korean Association of Museums. How did it really translate? Translated into what exactly? And that's the first. And the second is, um, how was it this communication between artists and scientists? Because it's something that we struggle a, a little bit everywhere. Uh, wherever we cross disciplinary boundaries, uh, it seems to be challenging. And so I wanted to have your experience, explore a little bit on your experience about it. Thanks. Yeah, the, the second questions, it is very ideal to connect the scientists and artists in our museum, but actually it was quite difficult because the, the Michael is he's also a scientist and artist he's know about the exhibitions and museum things, but the Korean uh, scientists, when we talk about, about the exhibition, then they said, oh, how much, how many posters I have to, <laughs> I have to prepare. <laughs> so they just, uh, they didn't understand the, the concept of the university museum exhibition. So we, we have to show them the explanation and this is not a very uh, academic uh, exhibition. So it is for mm -hmm. the public and student. So we have to make it easier <laughs> and uses mm -hmm. a lot of images, impressive images. Yeah. So the process was not easy, but, and yeah. And like about, the government funding programs, and I, I'm, I don't know about the, the not, condition. It was, it was not, the, sorry to interrupt. It was not the program, uh, the government, I think. It was the association, wasn't it? The, the Korean Association of Museums. Or oh, is that governmental? Oh, no, it, it is not governmental, but okay. they got a lot of government funding for running right. a, lot of, a lot of programs, and they support the... So I say to hiring people. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the ah. mm -hmm. university museums and a lot of private museums, and also they support the the database of the of their collections, and Wonderful. also for the educational programs. Wonderful. And they have another. Maybe some of it, some of you know about the the Korean Association of University Museums. Yes, and in fact, listen. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. be put in touch with somebody from the that that association because for years I've been trying to contact them, but I, it seems that I have the wrong email addresses. So if you could be so kind <laughs> to put me yeah. in touch, yeah, it's one of the oldest in the world. Did you know it was created in the nineteen sixties? Uh, really? 60, 61. Association. Yeah, 61, yeah. exactly. Uh, this so is the 60th anniversary, anniversary and uh, mm -hmm. from 2019. <laughs> and oh, I'm yeah. actually, I'm a secretary of the that. Uh, oh my God, so I'm in contact with you. Okay, yeah. let's do things. <laughs> let's do things because yeah. we got to yeah, yeah, it's uh, a few days, few, few weeks ago. I contacted with Wenzia, so she, she okay. has the okay, but we get dinner. And, okay, okay, great. So, if you do have any any questions, and also last uh, last four years, we got the, our own government funding from mm -hmm. the government for the right. university museums, so exhibitions right. and education. Yeah, because we so, met, we met, Umak has met in Korea with the mm -hmm. icon, the big one in Seoul. Uh, uh, yeah, in, 2004, I don't right? 2004, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah, but I'll be in touch. I don't want to monopolize. I'll be in touch with you, okay, about this. Thank you and well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Michael, want to, to ask, to tell yes. us. Thank well, you. Uh, thanks, Naya Na Young, uh, for this wonderful presentation. Um, I want to thank also the museum for this uh, amazing uh, opportunity uh, to make this interdisciplinary uh, exhibition in Seoul. And uh, I, I agree absolutely with Marta uh, that it's not easy, it's not obvious to, uh, to bring different communities together because all um, my experience at my, uh, all communities have a very narrow uh, view on what and how to do. But um, the, the, the trick 
or the uh, the recipe to make something uh, successful, uh, what happened in the Seoul uh, Hanyang Museum is that um, one has to uh, convince the different communities that the specialists on the other side, they should do their, their job. We are there as scientists to advise, to give content, but not to uh, tell others how to present because the specialists are definitely in the museum uh, uh, community. And the artist, uh, they also uh, has to uh, they need it need to be uh, 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 tuned such that they that they understand themselves not as a, as an artist itself. It's not an art exhibition. It's a collaborative um, effort. And uh, I'm working at CERN since many years, and uh, CERN is living out of these collaboration efforts. So that's why mm -hmm. um, uh, I I have experience from the scientific side. And uh, we brought this in, and I think, uh, or I'm, uh, my experience is that these interdisciplinary collaborations mm -hmm. uh, involving specialists on the different, uh, from the different sides, brings mm -hmm. each uh, of the of the communities uh, more than uh, one community itself, and definitely for so for the society in the 21st century. So I think um, to connect. To specialists on other in other disciplines, is an important way to go to uh, fascinate society on not just on science but on all topics uh, which are uh, we are working on. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, wonderful things that we could do at the museum and the art. <laughs> and um, the the for uh, connecting science and art. I mean, uh, art is a little bit too narrow again as an expression mm -hmm. i would say we uh, we create uh, we connect science uh, thinking with creativity because mm -hmm. it's not about just art it's about cine cinematography it's about sculpture it's about music it's about whatever uh, ex creative expression uh, and uh, to make especially the young young uh, generation aware that without creativity there's no science and mm -hmm. in the other hand without serious, serious um, observation and analyze, there's no art. Art mm -hmm. is not just color on the, on the paper. Of art course. is a, is a deep uh -huh. uh, negotiation and uh, on, on, uh, on topics. So, and this is for, for the, especially for me, I'm also, uh, uh, as you could see, <laughs> it, it, uh, very interested in, in teaching in educative uh, elements. So, uh, and the next generation needs to understand that art uh -huh. is something serious, science is something creative, and we we need they need to think out outside of the box to uh, to uh, to uh, some challenge, so get the challenges of the twenty first century uh, done, because it's okay. them will we face it. Thank you very much, Michael. Well, thanks a lot to everybody. Very interesting. <laughs> uh, I mean, I just I have another question. Are the, the talks or the presentation yes. somewhere uh, to download afterwards and have a look? Yes, Michael. Yes, everything will be available okay. um, maybe beginning next week, okay, after the presentation. So you can see everything. And there's a lot of stuff regarding art. Yes. Because this is the community, not only of uh, scientific museums, but of every museum in every university, okay? So yes. there'll be a lot of stuff that might uh, interest you. Right, we'll, you. We will put you in yeah. our mailing list. You want that? If you do, just let me know. Yes, yes, please, please. Uh, don't, please put me in your mailing list. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, thanks, we continue because uh, the time is running, running. And uh, the next... Uh, presentation is Hitchcock at the University Museum at first earthquake, then object from the collection. Presentation is uh, by Marek Bukowski, Museum of the Medical University of Dance uh, Poland, and uh, Hubert uh, Kowalski, University of Warsaw Museum Poland too. Then welcome. Welcome. I hope you Okay, I hope you, you 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 are able to see my my uh, yes. Okay, so I can start. Um, it's a, a, 
I will uh, later I will uh, I will explain something about the title of our presentation. But the most important thing is uh, that uh, sorry I made a mistake. Uh, okay. Uh, in the recent month, uh, our universities, means University uh, of Warsaw Museum and my Museum of Medical University of Warsaw, had produced um, the movies dedicated to our history and the history of science. And these are found it uh, really nice, and you can see some pre print screen from this um, uh, from this uh, movies. This one is. Uh, talking about the sculptor who prepared his uh, workshop in a ruin and building in, in the middle of, of, of Warsaw. And at the moment it's turned to the, some kind of gallery. Uh, and we find out suddenly the, the picture, the movie, tell us completely new and fun, fasc fascinating story. Uh, it also the very useful tool in a time of pandemia to tell about uh, our university, for example, Warsaw movies, the things about the university you didn't know um, yet. So uh, uh, some uh, uh, random random uh, uh, travel around the campus in, in Warsaw. It's also uh, the architecture of this of this university, and in this venue, we were able to meet the people and talk to the people uh, who are important for the science for the university. Some of them, unfortunately, passed away. So we were able to capture uh, the moment, uh, the beginning, the middle of a pandemic, the state of university at uh, 2020 or 2021. And we also were able to look at the, to observe the secrets from our museum uh, shelf. Here are some photos taken in my university museum. And what's also uh, perhaps uh, I have to, I have to translate this last three words on this, of this card. Do not destroy it. It is this history of pediatric surgery. So it is some kind a symbolic for us to make a, a movies uh, about the past, about the university. And we find out at the beginning that uh, uh, using media are very, very simple. It is necessary, you, you need to set up a page and you have to publish the photos, publish videos, some, uh, some records or other uh, material, and finally add brilliant, funny comments to gather the, the attention of, of publicity of, of viewers. But we had also the sad remarks that if we did it too simple without any, uh, any preparation, we make a huge, fail so we need uh, we have a poor result so we need something that we uh, observe the disadvantages of this very leaked preparation are poor scenarios bad photos bad editing formal errors horrible sound so what are our conclusion the topic should be chosen very carefully you have to find out the most interesting uh, topics from your history, not only for you, but for the wider audience. You have prepared the strict script, uh, which will be changed and checked a number of time. We also should, um, uh, it also should be um, like the principle that I will tell later, it should be uh, the earthquake in the beginning and then the tension should be uh, the, uh, being bigger and bigger. And finally, we need to use the most sophisticated technology uh, we have observed in the previous uh, presentation, uh, shooting, animation, backshot, macro lens, and something like that. We also should use uh, post-production to improve the quality of the scenes and dramaturgy and add some comments and to make it closer, shorter, the, uh, the narration. And finally, we are preparing because of this, because we start with almost nothing, but we start with very few 
uh, movies. Right now, we are preparing to make a bigger, the series, the, the movies uh, about the history of science, history of university that will be published. And perhaps then we'll be able to share with you our conclusion, our remarks. And finally, thanks to Andrew Simpson, he asked us, what about the Hitchcock? It is the very popular in Poland that Hitchcock, the man on the left, used to say uh, this quote, but we find out that uh, Samuel Goldwyn was yeah. the man who said, I want a film that begins with an earthquake and works up to the climax. On the right is a the piece of his poster from the, from the movie called Attack, uh, another hit from the Samuel Goldwyn. By the way, he was born in Jewish family in Warsaw, Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marek. Very interesting subject too. Uh, if someone wants to, then we have a, someone I agree with the script to be used in the video media. Sir Marek, it represents all the contents and also the research component to be used in the film. Carlos Saiko, tell you. Well, I don't know if someone wants to ask something more. Well, thank you. Thank you. An example of one of the films. Do you have a, a link or something to see another film? Yes, we will, we will send you uh, the uh, the movies in Warsaw are also bilingual. The movies in Gdańsk are only in Polish because we haven't got enough money. We have 50 short movies, uh, two or two and 30, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. They are like uh, video clips uh, from all the MTV uh, to present people uh, chosen topics, chosen uh, object from our collection, and they are only in Polish. So perhaps for majority of you, uh, it will be not very uh, useful. But of course, you can uh, you can admire the the footage, the shooting, uh, all the things that are connected with the post production. So I will send you the the email to this also. Yeah. Then we have a link in the chat. You could. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in okay. just in a moment, I will prepare it and okay. I will share with you. Okay. Thank you very much. Then uh, we finish with Marek, and the last one is in Provence comes for visitors to the museum. The is the highest of official human of the disease University in May. of Santo Tomas. Oh, wait a minute. He is the president and CEO of the university. Formerly. Mike. Mike. Excuse me for a moment. Excuse me for a moment, please. We're here, Margarita, if you need us to start the... Well, excuse me, we have a, a little problem with, with my computer. Then uh, we finish with the, the last uh, presentation. Uh, improving outcomes for visitors to the Museum of Human Disease of Sydney with Derek Williamson of the Museum of Human Disease of Australia and Patsy Polly Gary Vellan, School of Medical Science of Sydney too. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, Margarita. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Uh, my name is Derek and I'm from the Museum of Human Disease at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, uh, where it is the future. I'm speaking to you from tomorrow. Uh, it's about quarter past 12 
Yeah, so uh, I can tell you tomorrow looks great. Uh, before I go any further, I would just like to uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that the museum and that the university sit upon, the Bedigal people of the Eora nation, and to pay my respects to their elders, both past and present, and to their emerging leaders as well, and to extend that same respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, and in fact, any First Nations people who are here with us today. Uh, I also would like to acknowledge the Cadigal people, uh, who are the traditional custodians of the land that I am working from tonight in lockdown here in Sydney. Uh, tonight, uh, I would like to describe for you some of the work we have done at the uh, Museum of Human Disease to better understand our impact on our visitors. Uh, in the middle of the 1990s, the Australian Vice Chancellor's Committee got together and analysed collections on campuses around Australia and to provide some guidance on how they should be used. And uh, the example here is just one of the important roles that university museums were seen to play for universities, and that is to provide an informed enjoyment uh, and, and educational opportunities. Uh, for people around the university. Um, and they gave a couple of recommendations, which was that we would do innovative research, that we would regularly survey our visitors, and most importantly, that we can assist the university to be in closer touch with its community. Uh, this is the museum I work at. It's a biology medical collection, a collection of diseased human organs. Uh, it's quite unique. Uh, it's one of the only collections of its kind in Australia that opens its doors and certainly the only one that opens its doors every day for people to come in. We hold a nationally significant collection. We have the only uh, example of uh, mad cow disease in a human brain in Australia, uh, amongst other things. We have uh, examples of diseases of vaccination and things like that. Uh, Anecdotally, we know that visitors to the museum leave intending to have better health behaviours. They want to go away and quit smoking, they want to lose weight, they want to cut down on their alcohol intake and a range of other things. But the question arises to how the museum influences them and how we can make that impact actually lead to behaviour change. So we do lots of interesting things to get people into the museum. So this is an art science program we did a few years ago. Uh, where we recorded uh, heartbeats from audience members and played them to jazz musicians who improvised music. Uh, in the background on the screen, we have a live cardiac ultrasound being displayed up there uh, so people could see the actual heartbeat of uh, one of our volunteers. Uh, now, uh, in the museum, we like to think that we uh, save lives. Um, and in this case, we absolutely did, but that's a, another story entirely. But are, what are the impacts that as a museum we want to have on our audience? Uh, and following some, present, some of the presentations and discussions yesterday, I've had it in here, um, some of the uh, sustain, sustainable development goals that we are starting to uh, put into the material that we do. So the first one is we want people to live longer and healthier lives. And we want to do that in a way that addresses gender equality and other inequalities around uh, health in Australia and even globally. And certainly climate action is one of those things that is one of the most significant impactors of future health. Um, we want to uh, ensure that our visitors value the work of our medical science researchers. And in fact, the university uh, colleagues who research all sorts of things, we know that this will uh, achieve a number of um, outcomes. We want students to have success in their courses. And this is both the, the students that come to visit the museum uh, as high school students to learn uh, things for their courses, but also the volunteers and the medical students that interact with our specimens and with our audiences. We want them to have success in their courses. And we also want future students to see opportunities in the courses that are offered by the university. Um, and they can only do this if they begin to see themselves. So if our messages uh, offer diversity uh, and let them see themselves, whoever they are, in 
uh, the messages and the research that is going out uh, from uh, our institution and through the university. Uh, museum visitors themselves perceive learning as a cognitive process and something that happens in their head and is about gaining knowledge uh, and information or skills. Uh, although learning is a significantly common outcome cited by museums, I found it really hard to find research that nominates outcomes and checks to see whether uh, people leaving museums have actually learnt a very specific outcome. Uh, there are very generalist ideas of um, success, but there's very little specific outcome. Um, and we were particularly interested in, in some of those items around behaviour change um, and linking knowledge acquisition with the idea that people can change their behaviours. Um, and we saw this in some uh, great research that came out of the Manhattan Children's in, uh, Museum. Um, and that we need to match our message to uh, help people have an ability and a willingness to respond to the messages that we might give them, not just giving them you need to be healthier, but helping them to make those decisions and to support themselves in those decisions when uh, their peers and other people in their, their experience aren't supportive of those same decision processes. So we wanted to look at what do our visitors already know? What do our visitors want to know? And what would we like them to know about? What did we want messages? Did we want to give them? And how do those three things interrelate? Uh, so we did a pre and post survey looking at our audience and their knowledge and whether a museum visit impacted their knowledge, whether it impacted their valuing of science um, and medicine in particular, and whether there was any intentionality on their part after a visit to the museum to behave differently in terms of their health. And of course, whether a visit to the museum satisfied their needs, whatever those needs might be. So our audience, in terms of the knowledge that the audience arrived with, uh, we see here, this is their self-assessment of their knowledge of medical science. And we see that, uh, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, the visitors self-assessment of their knowledge, level of knowledge of medical sciences. And we can see that um, probably quite uh, expectedly, everyone thinks that they're about average. Uh, and so we need to address these things, especially in, in the complex nature of science and health, address the fact that we're having people who probably are coming in not understanding a great deal about the things that we want them to understand that can be very high order thinking processes in medicine and, and health and research and things like that. Uh, what are their health concerns? What do they want to know about? Well, the thing that they fear most is cancer, uh, except when we looked at our online audience uh, um, in terms of coming to our virtual museum that was set up during COVID, uh, where cancer no longer was. But what we were quite surprised about that in the time of COVID, people weren't really interested in infectious diseases. They weren't really uh, interested in COVID in particular. They uh, had other in-specific uh, interests. But for most of our audience, it's really interesting to see that what their most fear is cancer, even though uh, it's um, not really the most significant uh, impactor of life. Uh, so do we impact knowledge? Do we impact valuing? Do we impact behaviour? Well, our research tells us that uh, people who came in and visited the museum and then left uh, had learnt um, some things around lifestyle. Uh, so this was one of the factors that where we had an improvement. Now, one of the problems we have is that um, most of our results are very high end. So people agree with us quite strongly, but this was a... Um, a question that we phrased in a way that uh, meant they really needed to have understood. Uh, and after a visit, they understood better than before that lifestyle really does have the most important impact on uh, our outcome in disease and health. Uh, so we do impact knowledge. What does that translate to in terms of valuing? Uh, we change the way that they think, although they don't think that we change the way that they think as much as they uh, indicate we changed the way that they think about health and uh, having positive attitudes towards medical research. Uh, so they um, aren't aware that we are changing their ideas of what they value in those things. Uh, and in terms of behaviours, yes, we had a, 
after a visit, we had a very high proportion of people uh, who said things like, I want to find out about my health and I'm more likely to make a change to make myself healthier and that I'm going to make a change now. So we were actually impacting their intention to alter their behaviours to be healthier. Uh, of course, intention doesn't necessarily uh, mean a guaranteed change, but at least we're one step of the way down this, uh, towards this understanding. Now, a few years ago, we uh, worked together with uh, Andrew Martin, a professor at the university, to look at the impact uh, of setting goals for a group of students coming into the museum. And what we found was when we got those students to set a goal, they actually had higher valuing when they left and they had higher knowledge when they left uh, and higher intentions of behaviour when they left. Uh, and so this setting a goal gave uh, improved the outcomes for these uh, students. And we wanted to see, could this same goal setting be used for our adult audiences? So when our general public adult audiences come in, can we get them to set a goal? Uh, uh, so will setting a goal improve the impact of a museum visit? Uh, so uh, if we look at the goal choices, although everyone said they were worried about cancer, predominantly uh, people, were very inspecific. They had no real uh, learning goal. They didn't say anything that they wanted to learn. So uh, this, I think, has impacted uh, our, um, our results further down the line because, in fact, um, goal setting did not impact knowledge acquisition at all. Uh, goal setting had a slightly negative impact on measures of valuing. So, in fact, uh, after we got them to set a goal, when they left, they valued medical science left less than when they arrived. Uh, although it was a very small amount and uh, low significance, uh, and it had no impact on behavioural intentions. Um, so goal setting uh, didn't work particularly well. Um, I think uh, we the next uh, areas of our research to look at if we focused uh, exhibitions or tours within the museum, would that increase the impact? Can we modify our goal setting uh, to uh, have a a more impact for uh, our adult audiences? Can we do it in a way that is uh, more significant for them? Uh, and um, can we have more impact on behavior or, or we want to look at uh, more research around behavior and intentions and does that intentionality when they leave the museum translate into behavior change uh, and how we can uh, magnify that. But we do have some research that shows us that coming to the museum does in fact uh, improve people's valuing of their health uh, and of the people who work around us and the work that they do. Um, and so that's uh, pretty exciting for the museum to be able to say that we are actually impacting people's opinion of the university and the things that it does. Thank you very much. And well, feel free thank to get you in touch. Much, very interesting presentation too. I don't know if someone wants to ask something to Derek. Question for Derek, please. Well, there is a. The, uh, I is think, there I think, a I think, could you could you read it? Is there potential in the collection not just to think about people on health, but also to raise awareness about health inequalities and to create greater understanding? I, uh, there absolutely is not so much in our collection. We uh, have quite a, I guess it's quite a traditional collection of, uh, of um, pathology specimens, which come with very little identifying information about them. Um, but we can certainly uh, use the fact that the people are in the museum to highlight the things that we've probably learned since this collection came about, such that uh, Australian, Indigenous Australians have significantly lower health um, than do um, the rest of uh, Australia's population. And those are really important things and that, uh, that equity uh, has a huge impact on health and that uh, climate change is gonna have a huge impact on health. And um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Australia currently is uh, quite recalcitrant in our climate policies. Um, and uh, some of these things are messages that we would like to be giving to people so that they uh, vote more carefully uh, when it comes to considering um, the impact of climate change on their future. 
and there is another. I would yeah. have another question. Um, I think it's pretty, it was pretty impressive um, how you analyzed uh, your impact. Um, can you or do you already uh, provide a methodology for policymakers to convince uh, public, general public, uh, to more, be more receptive on scientific uh, data of uh, vaccination? Because what I see and um, is in Europe, and but not just in Europe, uh, people are uh, not really, there's a big fraction of people who we still need to convince, which will uh, uh, keep us in, in this uh, lockdown loop for another uh, period, unfortunately. What is your uh, answer to that? Could, do you have any ideas how, how we could uh, use your experience in, in, a, in a wider uh, spectrum? I, I, we do um, a lot of communication around vaccination because we know that uh, even you know, in Australia we have uh, parents who won't vaccinate children across a range of different vaccines uh, and things like measles and we know that around the world measles continues to come back because of these people who uh, refuse to vaccinate their children. Um, and part of that problem, I think, is that uh, people don't see these diseases anymore. You don't see measles causing um, great strife to children anymore. And so people, uh, the negative possibilities outweigh the things that they don't see. They don't see children becoming deaf and blind and dead because of measles anymore. Um, and so showing them uh, that often, um, uh, showing these diseases often kind of uh, reinforces. But um, one of the things that we know about kind of vaccination is that, unfortunately, it's really hard to argue someone uh, into um, vaccination, uh, and quite often it just makes it worse, um, and that it's really just about a continual reinforcement and um, re-impression of the messages uh, from a lot of different sources and eventually uh, hoping that people will um, come around. Um, but it, it, it's a really difficult one because quite often the choice about vaccination is less rational and significantly more emotional. Uh, and uh, perhaps um, people uh, who interact in, in art and things like that are probably much better for communicating these things to that particular set of people than uh, perhaps uh, some of the rest of us are. Uh, those of us who are more um, clinical uh, because, uh, yes, yes, arguing doesn't seem to work and evidence doesn't seem to work, uh, unfortunately. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Derek. Very interesting subject today, of course. Thank you. Then uh, I think so we could finish now to begin the other session with Nicole. Raffer of chair. <laughs> well, uh, we have to take a, a, a picture. <laughs>